Hello, welcome back. Now let's take a look at the second category, which is long-term solvency and financial leverage ratio. So uh, the first ratio we're going to look at is total debt ratio. And you may seem this, this equation may appear odd to some of you because we are computing the debt ratio, but I do not see debt anywhere. So in here, I will point to the numerator. Notice that the numerator is total asset divided minus total, uh, total equity. So I want to point you back to the fundamental accounting equation, which says that total asset is equal to total liability plus total equity. So if you subtract total asset, if you subtract total equity from total asset, that means you will get total liability. So the numerator here actually is total liability. The reason why it is given as such is because on the balance sheet, typically total liability is not its own subtotal. Uh, so it is oftentimes difficult to find a number that is total liability. Instead, you may see um, different um, items. So let's take a look at our balance sheet and we'll see how that is um, re presented. So once again, we're going to use the ending number. So if you look at the balance sheet, notice that it has total current liability, it has long-term debt, but we don't have a line that says total liability. So that is missing. So in order to compute total liability, we, have, we can do it one of two ways. One is using the formula which will be total asset, and that will be $3 million minus total equity, so minus $2,456,550. So that will be method one. So the first method is following, literally following the equation that you saw in the formula. We take total asset minus total equity. So pause the video and see what you get. Hopefully you get $640,000. So that's one method. Another method looking at the balance sheet, so again, this requires us to understand the balance sheet, is that there are two types of liability. We have current liability and long-term debt. So we can also add those two together and see what we get. If you add the two together, not surprisingly, you also get $640,000 thousand dollars. So the idea behind this exercise is to help you understand that the relationship between asset, equity, and liabilities. So for the total debt ratio, our numerator is $640,000 that we just computed, and we divide that by total asset. So we already have that from the balance sheet as well. That's about $3 million. So we can compute our debt ratio, and our total debt ratio in this case is 0.2067. Or another way of looking at this is 20.6% of our firm is financed by debt. So sometimes this is called the debt ratio. And another way that this can be described is the capital structure of the firm. So the capital structure of this firm is that is financed about finance 20.67% using debt. That means the remaining 79.33% comes from equity. Another thing that I want to point out is the term debt and liability is used interchangeably. So now that we have computed the total liability, uh, we know the numerator for the second equation, which is total debt. So that's also $640,000. I'm going to have you pause the video at this point and compute this next two ratio on your own. Hello, welcome back. I hope you get 0.2605 for the debt to equity ratio and 1.2605 for equity multiplier. If you do not get these two numbers, again, please pause the video. Go to the uh, slides that shows the more detailed calculation to make sure that you understand um, what mistakes you may have made.
Now, what do these numbers tell us? So the debt to equity ratio here, we know the numerator is debt and the denominator is equity. So what that tells us is that for every dollar that you put in as equity, you are borrowing 26 0.05 cents. So that's what the debt to equity ratio tells you. It tells you how much you borrow for every dollar of equity that owners put in. And that also helps us understand the equity multiplier. The equity multiplier, as the name imply, is it tells you how much total funds you have available to for investment for every dollar you put in as equity. So if you borrow 26.05 cents, for every dollar you put in as equity, that means for every dollar of equity, you have a total of $1.26.05 to purchase asset to, so, so that to, for the firm to operate. So that's what the equity, equity multiplier tells you. And at this point, I want to point out another method for computing equity, equity multiplier. So there's an alternative formula to compute equity multiplier. If you have already computed the debt to equity ratio, you can add one to the debt to equity multi, uh, debt to equity ratio, and you will get the equity multiplier. And this formula should make sense once you think about what the equity equity multiplier is trying to tell you. Again, it tells you for every dollar you put in as equity, since this is the one dollar, for every dollar you put in as equity, and you borrow at a fixed ratio, then you have a dollar twenty six cents to purchase asset. Okay, the next two ratio is slightly different. Notice that uh, in all the prior ratio that we described, we have we we all the items comes from the balance sheet. The next ratio is times interest earn ratio. It's defined as EBIT, which stands for operating in. Uh, earnings before interest and tax, or sometimes this is called operating income divided by interest. So in this case, both item comes from the income statement. And the same is true for the next item is called cash coverage ratio. And I want to talk a little bit about this. EBITDA, E-B-I-T-D-A, stands for earnings before interest and tax. So I is interest, T is tax, D stands for depreciation, and A stands for amortization. So you will not see these items separately in, on the balance on the income statement. So some firms include that, but some firms do not. So but we know that this is basically earnings before interest and tax. And we want to include back depreciation and we want to include back amortization. So you can add back depreciation and amortization and that will give you EBITDA or earnings before interest and tax and depreciation and amortization. So I'm going to have you pause the video at this point, go to the income statement, look up the numbers for EBIT, interest, compute EBITDA, and so compute the next two ratio, and then come back. Did you get 12 times for times interest earned and 13.5 times for cash coverage ratio? If you do, congratulations. So notice that EBITDA for this firm is $275,000 because our operating, our earnings before interest and tax is $240,000. Our depreciation is $30,000. And we have no amortization for this firm. So we end up with an EBITDA of $270,000. Now, what is the difference between these two ratios? Times interest earned ratio, I think is relatively straightforward, is how much interest are you earning? So obviously, if you earn less than your interest payment or your interest obligation, that's a really, really bad thing because if you can't pay your interest, you can, again, get into a serious financial problem. So in here, this firm is earning 12 times its interest. That's a relatively safe margin. So that, that's a good sign. There are other situations where a firm may not show a lot of um, earnings, particularly for new companies who is growing really, really fast and is investing a lot in, uh, in its assets. So for those companies, they may have a very high depreciation, but depreciation is a non-cash expense. A company needs cash to pay interest. So if the, a lot of the expenses that reduce 
earnings is due to depreciation, the firm may still be in a good uh, position to pay off its interest from a cash flow standpoint. And that's why we compute the cash coverage ratio. We add back all the non-cash items into EBIT, and that and this number typically will be higher than times interest earn ratio. So if you're evaluating a new company with a lot of depreciation expense, the cash coverage ratio may be more meaningful than the times interest earn ratio. So again, when you're using these ratios, it's important to understand why you compute this ratio, understand the company you're working with, uh, and why is that particular ratio meaningful for this firm. Okay, we'll end this video here. Uh, we'll continue with the next category of ratios in our next video.